our mayors and uh, other uh, members of county departments to include uh, a lot of our uh, administrators from not only the town of Hilton Head, Bluffton, and Beaufort, and and the county administrator. But we uh, we have finished that project. We, the governor came up and um, gave us some words of wisdom. Uh, this is kind of the official kickoff of hurricane season. The governor's got his state staff here with him, so I want to go ahead and turn this over to uh, the governor of the great state of South Carolina, Henry McMaster. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff Tanner. And we are here in preparation. That is the main word, the key word for hurricane season. Hurricane season has already begun. We've had a lot of hurricanes in South Carolina. We have a lot also, we have a lot of new people who've not been in South Carolina or any other state when a hurricane has arrived. So we want to try to educate everyone as to what it takes to be fully prepared because a lack of preparation can have enormous consequences both for our people and their property and, and even their relatives. Uh, what we ask is, is to people to go to official sources for the information don't take chances, get prepared before the hurricane arrives. Don't try, don't wait until the wind is blowing and howling and the rains are hitting to start getting ready for the hurricane. And also be prepared for an evacuation order that would be issued by me. Now we don't issue evacuation orders except when it is time for everyone to evacuate. And if an order is issued, Everyone should evacuate in an orderly fashion, which will be controlled and directed by the authorities here in, in the county and in, in the counties. But it's a, a lot, of, sometimes people do not leave, and sometimes things work out all right. Other times they work out with uh, serious consequences. But we will be providing information on how to prepare, where to get the prepare, preparation instructions. We'll do that in a minute with these, these men. And we would urge everybody to take it very seriously and, and understand that a, a, an ounce of preparation is, an ounce of prevention is worth, in this case, at least a ton of cure. Because once you, your life is lost, or those are your loved ones, you've had serious injury or complications, you can, uh, you can rebuild property, but you can't rebuild people. Okay, let's start with the Highway Patrol. Thank you, Colonel Manley. Thank you, Governor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Travis Manley, uh, Lieutenant Colonel with the South Carolina Highway Patrol. Here on behalf of Director Woods, uh, Director of Department of Public Safety. Just want to emphasize what planning has gone into place up to this point um, for DPS along with our state uh, resource partners that are with us. Each year, DPS works closely with uh, SEDOT, uh, EMD and other state and local partners to ensure that we are prepared for evacuation of the coast if the need is that. Uh, we know the hurricanes uh, from the past, we we've, we've know how to prepare, but the communication piece to the public is what is going to be key. We want to ensure that the public knows what it is to do to prepare and allow for a swift evacuation off the coast. Uh, I want to emphasize once again the level of planning that's gone into place. We've uh, started our planning back in February. Uh, did planning meetings, uh, tabletop exercises in February and March, and then we moved into the, uh, the governor's uh, tabletop exercise in May and currently are in preparation for the June 9th full-scale exercise that will take place here in Beaufort County, uh, also in the central region of Charleston, Orangeburg, and Columbia, and then the northern region of Horry County. And this will be a, a simulation of what a full-scale uh, event would be, uh, we will not be closing any roadways. We'll be staging assets with our partners with DOT, other state and local uh, resources on the shoulder of the road. So we ask the public to please uh, pay attention on June the 9th. Uh, we'll start off early in the morning. Uh, be, pay attention for our first responders that are on the side of the road uh, conducting this exercise. Uh, our goal is to once again to ensure that there's a, 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 a even distribution of traffic uh, down our 35 evacuation routes that are around the state. So uh, we, we don't want individuals to migrate to the area they know. We want them to migrate to the area that's designated for them when it comes to evacuating. So we ask you to please not follow your GPS during those times unless that happens to be the, the, the proper route for you to follow. So what we would like to preach today is, once again, prepare now, know your zone, and remember your route. So thank you, Governor. Thank you.
Department of Transportation. Thank Mr. you, Governor. Perry. I'm Rob Perry, a Director of Traffic Engineering for SCDOT. On behalf of Secretary Hall and the whole agency, I want to put out there that we are prepared for hurricane season once again. As Colonel Manley stated, uh, we start preparing in February, so we've ridden all 35 routes. Um, we've confirmed all of the evacuation route signing is in place. So as the Colonel stated, follow those signs, listen to directions from law enforcement and um, first responders as well as Department of Transportation personnel that might be at key locations at traffic control points. Um, it takes several hundred DOT maintenance um, em employees to turn, in, turn a lane reversal on and implement it with law enforcement. So it's a huge undertaking, but we've done it before and we're prepared to do it again as needed. Um, I encourage all of our citizens, whether you've been here forever or you just moved here last year, to download the 511 SC app on your smartphone or check it out on, on the computer. Um, it has all 35 evacuation routes listed on it. You can turn a layer on, it colors all 35 routes. You can go back to your home and with your smartphone, do that, hit the triangulate button, and that color cluster to your house is the route you're supposed to take. So with that, uh, I appreciate the time, and I'll turn it over to Director Stinson. Thank you. Mr. Director. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Kim Stinson from State Emergency Management. Uh, talk about a, briefly about a couple of items. One is it was we're almost certain to have some kind of hurricane activity this year. Uh, might not be a direct hit, but uh, certainly something that may cl close by. And as the governor mentioned, there's already a, uh, not, a, not quite a storm yet, but uh, here we're three days into hurricane season, and there's already uh, – uh, disturbance down in the uh, down in the tropics. Uh, would also like to emphasize that uh, a hurricane is not necessarily just a uh, coastal event. It can affect the whole state. You can have hurricane force winds uh, all the way back to York County, uh, and we've seen here in the last several years uh, the flooding issue that we've had. Uh, some of it here. Uh, some of it in other places, but we've had significant flooding in South Carolina, uh, and it's in many cases related to a hurricane situation. So certainly uh, we're all prone to flooding and flash flooding, so we need to take that threat very seriously. And again, it's not just a coastal event if we have a hurricane uh, uh, hit South Carolina. So for this year's hurricane season, we re encourage everybody to remember three items. Know your zone, prepare your home, and remember your route. Those three things. Know your zone, prepare your home, and remember your route. And they'll all help it help you make it a whole lot better through this uh, this hurricane season. Uh, and lastly, we want to ask everybody to be their own uh, emergency manager. Uh, you're going to have to be sometimes the help before help gets there. And so you need to be prepared, know what the threats are, and be able to uh, work through the situation. So we've got a number of uh, tools uh, that can help uh, individuals, both citizens and businesses, get ready for a, for a hurricane impact here in South Carolina. Uh, we've got our website at EMD. It's uh, SEMD.org, SEMD.org. It's full of information, not just for hurricane preparation, but for anything else, tornadoes, floods, you name it. It's, it's got information in there. We have an additional uh, dedicated uh, website right now just for hurricanes, so you can go basically go to online there to that, and it's a, essentially a uh, online version of our hurricane guide, and that's at hurricane.sc, uh, rather, I guess I think that's it, hurricane.sc, that's right, I did get it right, hurricane.sc, uh, so that'll help you, and again, it's a little bit easier than going to the, the big website if you're just looking for hurricane information. And then this year's hurricane guide uh, should be out here on the streets here pretty soon. It's available online uh, right now, uh, and it'll be uh, distributed here uh, later this month uh, through uh, Hold that up again, oh, through uh, uh, newspapers and uh, Walgreens uh, statewide and, uh, and also uh, welcome centers and coastal DMVs. Um, and then lastly, uh, we have a mobile app for your smartphone. It's called the South Carolina Emergency Manager app. And it has all this information that we've just talked about on there. And it also has a unique feature where you can actually build your own plan, uh, put important numbers in there, uh, insurance policy information, uh, link up points for you and your family uh, if, if you need to do something like that. And it's also got a feature right now, once you put the plan together, then you can actually uh, export it and send it to your family members so you can get it out there that way. 
So bottom line, we encourage everybody to get prepared, and those are some tools that, uh, that you can use. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Greg Stinson. And just a couple of uh, easy points to remember. If uh, an evacuation order is, is issued, uh, pay heed. It's, it's done uh, with uh, great, great thought and analysis. When we issue that, that means it, it's time. And uh, at some point, if the hurricane gets bad enough, usually after an evacuation order is issued, it's too late for you to get out and too late for anybody to come get you because the people that you want to come get you are gone as well because it's dangerous. And going back in, there may be power lines down, there may be other obstacles, there may be big puddles on the roads that have a big hole underneath them. So you have to be careful and listen to law enforcement, listen to all those in authority that are giving directions, giving information. Don't take the little secret shortcut that you know about that goes from this road to that road and saves you five minutes. You may end up not, ab not able to move. Go to official sources, follow the official sources, because all that information is good information. There's a lot of erroneous information, well-intentioned, but erroneous information on social media. So try to just ignore that and follow the, the right instructions. So if anyone have any questions, we'll be glad to try to answer them for you. Good afternoon, Governor Dean afternoon. Scott, WJCL. This is probably an obvious answer to this question. Uh, hurricane comes through, uh, most people are like, where is my power? So do we have a, a, a safety net in place where power companies or utility companies and stuff are pre-positioned prior to uh, a storm arriving, or is, is that just kind of on a case-by-case -case well, basis? Well, I'll let Network Stinson ask that, but that reminds me, when you leave, you may be gone from your home or your business for maybe five days or maybe sometimes even longer. And you will likely will not be let back in and, uh, when you think you can make it back in because the people who are in there that are tasked with understanding whether the danger has gone or not and is safe uh, are, are saying not to. And also, I'm confident that uh, Sheriff Town and others have plenty of plans for looters and those who would try to get in and get their property while uh, the owners are away. Would you like to address sure. that? Yes, sir. Uh, that's a good question, and uh, we work very closely with the, with the electric utilities because obviously we want to get the electricity up as quickly as we can, you know, get the grid back up. Uh, they have some exceptional plans uh, to uh, surge uh, personnel and equipment. Uh, they'll have people sometimes and equipment from other states and will actually come in. So they, they have this pretty well laid out so that as soon as it's safe to get into the area to actually do the repairs and the restoration, they're going to surge to do that. I'll tell you an interesting story. A couple of years ago, we were, I don't remember what county it was, somewhere in the low country, but the water was coming up fast over a road, a country road that was four or five feet above the, the regular ground. Uh, but at this time, it was over the road, and there's a car that had two men in it. It had gotten pushed off the road onto the side, leaning up against a tree. We flew over in a helicopter and saw them down there on top of the top of the car waving the water still coming up and they were rescued by a swift boat from Louisiana. I think it was Berkeley County. Is that where it was? Yep. Yeah. So uh, you got to be very careful. We, we were lucky we had uh, someone there that could go get them. More questions? I have one, pardon me, Governor. It might be more for sure. But, but Tanner, are you going to issue media passes so we can get in a little earlier? record whatever happened we, we've done that before and there was a little bit of confusion the last couple well of let years. me ask you did it work it worked for me we'll do it again okay. <laughs> that's the voice of experience <laughs> all right any more questions um, yes sir can you speak on your experience making several stops today and seeing the different emergency response teams and would you say the state as a whole is prepared for a large potential storm i would say yes very very well prepared because every, we were in uh, Horry County and then in Charleston and now here, and uh, the people from several, uh, from the surrounding areas and counties were involved, and most of the people that are involved this year have been involved in years before. Uh, there are some new, new folks, but uh, it's uh, quite an experienced team uh, that, that we've seen, and with the hurricanes uh, that we've had over the years, I think we've seen just about every every kind of storm from most every direction. So we have a very good team, and you, you put your finger on it. The essence of it is planning. You have to plan. Plan your work and work your plan. This is not something you do at the last minute. You have to have it planned out because when 
time comes, you're not going to have, the lights might be off, the wind might be blowing, better have gas in your car, air in your tires, and know, know where to go and, and how to get there, and that takes planning. Anything else? Yes, sir. With NOAA having, or at least releasing, an above average season for the Atlantic, are there specific challenges that Beaufort County faces when it comes to hurricane season that's different from other parts of the state? Yeah, I, well, anything in the low country, of course, the water, water can get pretty deep. Uh, the last time the, the ocean was up in Columbia was, uh, I think, five million years ago or something <laughs> like that. When, that's why they call them the sand hills, because it used to be the beach. So we're not expecting that to happen. But the wind and the wind and the rain was there. And uh, in, in Hugo in 1989, I live in Columbia, and, and uh, we were sleeping. Hugo blew, blew shingles off, off the roof and knocked down old live oak trees in, in downtown Charlotte. And uh, as you know, Charleston County took a direct hit on that one. But... Um, Yes, in the low country, the reason they call it the low country is because it's low. And the water, that means the water can be here a lot quicker than it'll be anywhere else. But it's still the most beautiful state in the whole world. And anybody who gets a chance to fly over this low country ought to take every chance they get to just take a look. Governor, let me, let me mention one other thing about some of the challenges today versus, say, going back to Hurricane Matthew and Irma and a few years ago. And, you know, Travis uh, Manley with the Highway Patrol, we've been working hurricane evacuations here in Beaufort County. I know for me for almost 42 years, we have seen a change in the landscape of South Carolina. Over the past two years, I know the governor's uh, just came, you just came out of Charleston and Myrtle Beach. Uh, when you look at the coastal South Carolina, you know, there's the, on the real estate side of the house, not a lot of real estate left to buy. So we know that we have had a huge influx and how that has impacted the coast of South Carolina. So the challenges for us, not only here in Beaufort County, because it is the low country, but it's our evacuation as we move citizens off the coast of South Carolina inward for safety, we've got a lot more people that we're moving, uh, so, and which increases the volume of traffic, so which will increase, and I know that Director Stenson knows better than anyone else, this is a timing thing. Well, when we're looking at a hurricane, we're looking at, you know, the impact of a hurricane on our coast, it's all about timing. When do we pull the trigger? When does the governor pull the trigger? And when do we start moving people? So those, that's, I think that's for this year, with everything that, uh, that everyone can learn about hurricanes, and I think it's incumbent upon you to teach your audience everything that you possibly can about hurricanes because there are folks and governor said it earlier there are folks that are living here now in south carolina that don't know how to spell hurricane so they know nothing about a hurricane they need to learn as much as possible and you need to help us educate these citizens that are new to south carolina that's right thank you very much <laughs>